What's up, MacU family? Welcome to the MacU Rally 2021. We know it's not the same watching online, but this is where we are right now. My name is Aaron, and I'm here with some good friends, EL, Rob, Jason, and Chris. Mm. Thanks for joining us online for the special way to connect. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And while you're here, let's talk. So engage in the comments below the whole time you're with us. Let us know where you're watching from. If you're an alum, let us know what years you were here. Uh, even if it was only one semester, maybe you did like the five or six year plan, let us know. But whatever it is that you're doing and what you're up to, take a second to say hello. Yeah, guys, I think we all know that 2020 was a very crazy and unexpected year, mm -hmm. a year of challenges, but also a year that allowed a lot of us to have some time for reflection. But we did things a lot differently, but we did not want to go without a MACU rally. So we're coming to you today from Pearl A. Presley with alumni all over the world. Now, Aaron, I'm going to go let you get ready for your message. In the meantime, we're going to bring in President John Maurice. Welcome, John Maurice. Come oh, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. This has been an unusual year in the life of our country and even in the life of our world. And uh, it's been extremely difficult with morale, with the church having to cancel services due to COVID as we faced a global pandemic. It's been a difficult year in many, many ways. And I am so proud of how our alumni have been resilient and they have created new ways that they can perform their ministries and their jobs to advance the kingdom of God. Uh, we want this event, this Rise Up event, our rally for 2021 to be an encouragement to you. Wherever you are, we realize it's been difficult. We have faced the same things that you have faced. We sent students home last March. We brought them back on campus in August. Then we had a COVID outbreak where we had about 60 students on quarantine, which was half of our student body at that point. And uh, then we had a building collapse. So uh, through it all, we have seen how faithful God is. And we stand today with his power and his might. And we are still about our mission as you are about your mission of advancing the kingdom of God. So I pray that this event will be an encouragement to you, to your family, to your congregation, and to whatever God has called you to do. And we're glad that you're joining in from around the world. So thank you so much. And thank you for hosting. Guys, y'all are awesome. Amen to that. And thank you, President Maurice. Uh, thanks for joining us. We would love to invite you to come back for another segment later. Would you be down with playing a game with one of our students? Absolutely. Awesome. If I can beat them. Uh, I, oh, I hope yeah. that you do. I hope that you do. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, and uh, we will see President Maurice a little bit later. So like we said, we're sitting here in the lobby of one of the dorms. It might not be one of the classrooms where we get uh, into the learning, but it's, it's one of those places where we make some of our best memories. Some memories we can share, and then there's other memories that just need, me, need to be locked away in the memory vault, right, EL? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whether uh, it was one of these buildings or the variety of facilities that have housed students throughout the years, this campus holds countless memories, your memories, and could be credited for some of uh, so many lifelong relationships, relationships held together by the love of Christ. Now, if we were in person right now, and uh, you guys were walking down memory lane together with your classmates, every one of you would start your stories with a phrase that goes something like this. When I was here, when I was a student, or uh, back in my day. That's right. And everybody knows that the best memories, the best days were the times when, when we were here. True that. And uh, that's one thing we love about the Gospel Rally is that it brought all those generations together. Yeah, absolutely. And the theme for this year's rally is Rise Up. And that's from Ezra chapter 10, verse 4, which says, Rise up. This matter is in your hands. We will support you, so take courage and do it. And this comes after a period of prayer, confession, and mourning led by the priest Ezra over the consequences of sin, but along with the acknowledgement that there's still hope for Israel. And after a year of politics and pandemic that remind us of the sin-broken world that we live in, we want this time to be an encouragement to rise up and be emboldened by the Holy Spirit to be on mission. And so over the next hour, we'll engage with teaching and music from alumni and students from all over the world, like Ajay Lal over in India and Kim Molden, who's just down the road in Little Washington, North Carolina. 
Yeah, we're going to have also some uh, time of worship with uh, Tim Cypress from Valley View Christian Church, all the way from Edgewood, New Mexico, and my other bearded brother, Greg Coverdale from Two Rivers down in New Bern, North Carolina. Yeah, we're looking forward to all of that, but before we get into that, we're going to hear from God's Word from our first speaker. I get the privilege of introducing our first speaker, who is our alumni speaker, Aaron Cross, who was just up here with us earlier. Now, uh, Aaron Cross was the founding minister of the Christ Fellowship church in Portsmouth, Virginia back in 2008. Uh, and there's a lot of impressive things we can say about Aaron. Lots. But I think the two yeah. things that he's uh, he's most proud of are probably number one, that he had the honor of being my roommate when we were in college together. And number two, that he also holds the distinction of being the only alumni to be asked to be the alumni speaker two years in a row. Mm. Yeah, he was actually last year's alumni speaker, but unfortunately we had to cancel that event due to COVID, maybe because Aaron was the speaker. I'm not sure if that was true. <laughs> In all seriousness, we're pumped to hear what Aaron has to say from God's Word. So let me send it over to Aaron Cross. I don't know when the last time you read the book of Ezra was, but chances are it may have been a while ago. I would say let us know in the comments, but you know Professor Woolard's watching as well, right? But this year's theme uh, for the 2021 rally is Ezra 10 for Rise Up. It says this, Rise Up, this matter is in your hands. We will support you, so take courage and do it. Now, most of us, we want a life that makes a difference. and We want to be people who, who lead. We want to bring about positive change where we're serving at. And we want to point people towards something more. We want to be successful, but I think more than success, we want to be people that find significance. We really just want to know that our life matters. So rise up serves as a great challenge to us as leaders. But what does it mean? So today I want to share just a, a few brief challenges from um, Ezra that we can learn from him and, and his experience and, and really what it has to do with us rising up. And, and we can find significance better than Ezra. In the Hebrew Bible, Ezra and Nehemiah were part of the same book, and, and throughout it, they contain much of the same themes throughout. It's about the exiled Jews, they're coming back and they're restoring their way of life and their way of faith. And we see the storyline of the scriptures because of continued unfaithfulness to God. Judah, the southern tribes of Israel, uh, had been overcome and had, they had been exiled to Babylon. The land that God had promised his people since their father Abraham, man, they were plucked away from. They were, they were removed from their homes and their way of life as they knew it, from their temple and, and from the promised land which was theirs. All of that was left behind. But through the providence of God, the Persian king Cyrus, he allows some of the Jews to start coming back uh, or going back to their homeland. So over time, these waves of Jews were coming back to Jerusalem and to their country. Now Zerubbabel, he leads a group back and, and they rebuild the temple. These folks were passionate and they were ready to work and they did an incredible work. Then years later, you may have heard of the story of Nehemiah and his great work of rebuilding the walls, but they, they rebuilt the city walls around Jerusalem. The temple was rebuilt, and that was the keystone of their identity as the people of God. Then their walls were fixed and rebuilt, and it gave them the safety and the confidence and a boundary that fixed their identity as a people. And these are both re incredible stories of rebuilding and rising up. But in between those stories of, of rebuilding um, the temple and rebuilding the, the city walls was a return to God's laws. So Ezra, the priest, he led the way in this. And he was going back uh, to Jerusalem to lead people in God's ways. But when some of the Jews come, came back long before Ezra's time, what happened was they intermarried uh, with some of the pagan locals that, that had moved in. And it may not sound like that big of a deal by today's standards, but this was a really big deal by God's standards and by the law he gave them. Why? Interracial marriage wasn't the problem. But the problem was the ability of these pagan spouses to lure God's people away from trusting in God alone. 
And so the first challenge that we see from Ezra that I just want to challenge us with today is, is that rising up requires a level of pain. You know, we typically avoid pain, don't we? Like, in fact, we love comfort and we pick things like our chairs and our beds and our foods and our cars and our clothes and our friends and so much more uh, based on the amount of comfort they give us, right? But if things were flawless, if there was nothing wrong, then there would be no reason for someone to, to step up and to lead and to pave a new way and to make change towards something better. The truth is there's so much going on around us that, that should just make us uncomfortable. And so when Ezra, he saw the status of the remnant of, uh, of the Jews that made it back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, and it, man, he was broken. That God, God's people were called to be different. They were uh, becoming something different than what God, God called them to be. They were mixing in with the world around them. They were losing their distinction to be holy, as God is holy. And so Ezra experienced pain. In Ezra 9, he hears about this and, um, and how they've, they've married and taken up the detestable practices of the culture surrounding them. And Ezra 9.3 says this. He says, When I heard this, I tore my tunic and cloak, pulled hair from my head and beard, and sat down appalled. To rise up, Ezra needed to, to experience and to see the sin and the brokenness around him. It's this pain that caused him um, and propelled him to rise up in his situation. You know, I like to be comfortable, but, but if you're a leader in any capacity, in your family, in your church, in your organization, among your friends, like, we can't get too comfortable. We need that discomfort. And when we see clearly that things aren't as they should be, it pushes us forward and fuels us to rise up to make a difference in this world. The second challenge um, I want to challenge us with from Ezra is this. We rise up by bowing down. It sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? What did Ezra do next? After the initial shock wore off, we see in Ezra 9.5, it says, uh, Then at the evening sacrifice, I rose from my self-abasement with my tunic and cloak torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord my God. So what did Ezra do? Ezra prayed. And you can read this prayer in Ezra 9. He pours out his heart to God. He pours out his pain. And it's a prayer of confession and intercession and, and repentance. And it's real and it's raw to God Almighty. When we get to that place where the only thing that we can do is to take it to God and to plead with Him, then God is getting ready to work in you and through you. Too often we try to rise up before we bow down. And we move and we act and we leave. We make decisions before we stop to humble ourselves before God and take it before Him. Sometimes we may be guilty of rising up to lead before we bow down. You know, Ezra shows us that when we, uh, when we see and when we experience pain, instead of jumping into action first, first we need to bow down and we need to take it to God. We need to pray before him. But Ezra doesn't stay bowed down, does he? No, in fact, the scripture says Ezra caused quite a scene and some commotion. Uh, he's praying out loud. He's weeping. He's laying down. He's rolling around on the ground. And people were starting to come from all over to see what was going on? I imagine kids were freaked out. Parents were hiding their eyes. And then this guy named Shechaniah, that's fun to say. You know you want to say it, Shechaniah. He steps up and he says, this is what we have recorded in Ezra 10, 4. He says, rise up. This matter is in your hands. We will support you. So take courage and do it. So this leads us to our third challenge. To rise up, we need the right voices in our ears. Like Shechaniah, he was the first in a large group of people to step up and to, he was brave enough to admit their unfaithfulness to God. And he speaks to Ezra. He's like, Ezra, we got you. 
Like we've gotten off course from God's word and uh, we, we went astray. Lead the way, Ezra. We are with you. You know, we live in an age where we have so many voices in our ears. We have literally thousands of messages come across our brain every single day. Think of all the music and TV and videos and news and social media feeds and and emails and text and then all the in-person conversations we have every day. That's why we have to pay attention to the right voices. Do you know that there were a few in the crowd that day that were against the changes that needed to be made? Those are people who stood in opposition to Ezra and, and to what he was trying to do. You know, as a recovering people pleaser myself, it's hard to sometimes not listen to all the voices because it is difficult. And, and if the pandemic has taught us anything in leadership, it's this. You can't please everybody. Yeah, we, we should have already known that, right? But now we can't deny it. Whether you're a politician, <laughs> a business leader, a church leader, you lead in an organization, we can't please everybody. I mean, I can't even please everybody in my car when we're trying to pick up fast food dinner. If I say, let's go to Chick-fil-A, someone else will scream in Taco Bell. If I scream Taco Bell, someone else will scream in Chick-fil-A. And then we have a royal rumble in my back seat of the car. We need to have the right voices in our ears. We need people who love us, but love Jesus more than they love us. And this is why I'm grateful to be here today with my wife that I met right here at MacU. And uh, I'm here with my good friends, even though they could be punks at times. Um, but our relationship was forged right here at MacU. I'm a better man and husband and dad and minister and leader because of the voices that I have in my ears. So Ezra, Ezra did it. Like they called people to repentance uh, and to turn away from their following the false gods and turn back to following the one true God Almighty. Like, we have a lot to rebuild, don't we? Here at MacU, it may be physical walls and buildings, but as we look around us, there's so much to rebuild. We have broken families, people struggling with mental illness, and people wrestling through loneliness and addiction. And, and so much brokenness going on around us. And maybe, uh, more than anything, the world that's lost and has no real hope and they're going to hell. It may be the hope that so many people have that's so flimsy and they put all this weight and expectation on it, but it can't bear the weight. They need more. They need real hope. And that hope is only found in Jesus, the Messiah, the hope of the world. So let's rise up for his glory. We see that rising up, it requires this level of pain and discomfort on our parts. We rise up by bowing down and, and humbling ourselves and praying before God. And to rise up, we need the right voices in our ears. So how is God calling you to rise up? Right now, I want to pray for us. I know it may be awkward over screens and this whole online thing, but I feel uh, these words need to be spoken on our behalf before our Heavenly Father. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have together. God, I pray that, that you will instill something in our heart. You'll give us the courage and the wisdom and the strength and the passion that we need to be people that rise up for your glory in this world. God, break our hearts for the things that break yours. God, uh, give us a new uh, uh, wave of fresh uh, air that we need. God, fill us and lead us with your spirit as we cling to your word. God, that we can make a difference in this world, all for your glory. Thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. God, it's in his name we pray. Amen. Heritage Hall, a place where the word of God has been passed down from professor to student. Mentor to disciple, a true heritage. Sending those disciples out into the world to bring the light of Jesus, an eternal inheritance cultivated within these walls. But on September 5th, 2020, Mac U experienced an unexpected and really disruptive disaster when the roof of Heritage Hall collapsed. Now thankfully it happened on a Saturday morning when the building was not in regular use and no one was hurt. Heritage Hall has been arguably the most important building on campus for decades. 
housing nearly all of the classrooms, the cafeteria, the mailroom, offices, and in a COVID-19 world, maybe one of the most important commodities, the internet. All of that was gone in a single day. As a result, we've had to be super creative, converting lobbies into cafeterias and classrooms, utilizing online platforms, and trading the familiar comforts of Heritage Hall with the abnormal adjustments that came with this unexpected disaster. So we, alumni, say, well done. Well done to the staff and faculty. Well done to the students. You've really made the best of a rough situation. Our school has faced adversity many times in the past, but our firm focus on God's provision has brought us through time and time again. Just as Israel had to rise up and rebuild the wall as they sought the Lord, we too are faced with the same opportunity. So Matthew family, please continue to pray for and support our alma mater as they navigate this new challenge. Why don't we take a second and pray right now. Pray with me. Father God, we come to you today with heavy hearts, with joyful hearts around the world on this new platform. We're so thankful for your son, Jesus Christ. We give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, I just pray that as we spread out to bring light into this dark world, that you will continue to encourage and inspire us, that we will cling to your word and pass it down to the next generations so that our kids and our kids' kids will know the love, the salvation, the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ. Give us strength as we move forward. Help this college to rebuild, to rise up as you've called us to do. Be with the students and professors as they teach and live out their day. God, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to head over to New Mexico with our friend Tim Cyphers as he leads us in a time of worship. And after that, we'll hear from a current MacU student, a very awesome guy, Eamon McElrath.
There's hope in the breaking. There's hope in the sorrow. There's hope in the breaking. Because he's alive. We still have a risen Savior. Come on, Jack. Shame is something. Oh, he's begun. Take courage. 
He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. Yeah. Hold on to your as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. Take courage. Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the way. A global pandemic, a building collapse, and a COVID outbreak walk on to a Christian campus in eastern North Carolina. Now, that sounds like a setup to a corny joke that your minister would say on Sunday. Maybe you would say on Sunday. But it was our reality this last year here at school. Now, by no means has this year been easy for anybody, and we have all been stretched in different ways. One thing I think about constantly is, how will this generation be remembered? How will this time period be remembered? When I'm old and gray and I look like you, who's watching me online right now, what are they going to write in the history books? As I was writing this, I, I noticed a flock of seagulls that were just hovering over the water. They were enjoying a thermal, and they just were exerting absolutely zero effort as they just floated over atop one another and enjoyed the good weather. Now there are times like that in our lives where the conditions are perfect and all we need to do is spread our wings and be plucked into the sky. And we can almost feel physically the presence of God like warm wind as he sustains us and he holds us in place. We just enjoy the weather. But then there are times like the storms that strip branches down to bare bulbs and strip flowers off of bushes and all shelter is ruined and our minds are shaped and we, we, are, we are forced into this mentality of no longer soaring but we are surviving. Our mind focuses on the shelter and there are times like that in our lives. We are forced to, to only think of the shelter and where we can find refuge. 
You know, this last year, we have redefined what it means to go to church. We have redefined what it means to come together as one body. We have learned about live streaming and Facebook Live and just the whole mess of it. Times where we say, I don't, I don't want to go and fly. I don't want to go soar amongst the clouds. I want to stay home and the storm is too scary. I don't want to go out. I need to stay home and be safe and enjoy the shelter. God, God, I can't. God, I don't, I don't want to anymore. God, I cannot fly. God, where are you? God, is the, where is the warm wind that once sustained me? So quickly, we lose our focus. So quickly we become afraid. I like what Jesus says in um, Matthew 6, verses 25 through 27. That he's confronting his disciples who are afraid to go out. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can you add an hour to your life by worrying? It's one thing to say and to listen to the words of Jesus. It's another completely to experience them. Because I can sit here as a senior in college with some ministry under my belt and just say, it's fine. Jesus has got you. Just trust in him. What does that do to validate the storm that you've been enduring? I cannot fathom the stress that you have gone through this year as you have tried to sustain your congregation and to preach God's word amidst all of this mess. It doesn't do it justice. I can't just say, be strong you got this. What does that actually do for you? The storm is here, yet with Christ there is no reason to worry. Because it is the Holy Ghost, it is the Holy Spirit who works through us for his work to be accomplished. You are right to doubt your strength. You are right to look in the face of adversity and say that you are not enough. Because if you are alone, you're trying to do things out of your own strength, you are. You're not enough. But luckily, there is a God that has given us his Holy Spirit that works through us. He goes before us in the storm and he calms it so we may go out and enjoy the warm wind again. There is a time ahead of us that is coming and we need to allow Christ to walk before us, not behind us. It is nothing that we can do. It is not our camera equipment, our live stream abilities. It is the God that we serve and the Christ and the Savior that died for us that supplies us with the means to get where God is calling us. Church, consider your legacy. Get your mind outside of your congregation, outside of your staff team, outside of your homes, and look at yourself as you are. Who are you looking to in the middle of the storm? Who are you looking to when the, the conditions are perfect and you're enjoying that warm wind? Are you going out alone and saying, I have brought everything that is good to me? Or are you looking ahead at the God that is providing for you? The birds and the trees who do not sow or reap, yet God provides for them. Who are you looking towards? How will my generation be remembered? How will this time period be written about? To be honest, I don't, I don't want to be remembered. I don't want the work that I've done to be remembered. I don't want anybody to look back at this time period and say, this is what, this is what he did. No, I want, I want the world to recognize what Christ did through his church. I want people to see how God in a time of crisis brought amongst calmness through Christ, and that is through his church. There's nothing that we can do. It's everything that God has done. I want the world to remember how Christians rose up. And people could see God working through them. I don't think it's far-fetched to say that we want the same things. Consider the legacy that is being left behind in your church. Look towards God amongst the storms to calm them as you go out.
Do not rely on your own strength. And can you continue to soar on knowing that God the Father is providing for you. You are awesome. You're loved by many. And I thank you for your time. Hey, thanks for that song and message, Tim and Eamon. You know, anyone who's been through the halls of MacU knows they stand on the shoulders of men and women who have left timeless legacies. Those who have left their marks in ways that future generations that might not even have the opportunity to meet them this side of heaven will still be impacted because of their commitment to this ministry and the lives of those who are changed by it. And there have been some singularly special people with whom God has blessed MacU. That's right. None more so than Trish Griffin. That's right. In November uh, 2020, we lost an incredible lady um, that's been a blessing to so many others in the classroom, um, in the library, in church, and, and in her own home. Miss Griffin was always available with a smile and some encouragement. So go ahead and take a moment and, and share a, a memory of Miss Trish in the comments below. We'd love to see that. And I'll start with one. I remember one time I was um, being studious. I was in the library making <laughs> copies uh, of a large academic book. And, uh, and so to get the copy to be legible and decrease, I had to press down real hard. So I pressed down and crack. The, sc <laughs> the screen oh, completely no. cracks on the photocopier glass. <laughs> And so I had to go tell Miss Trish what happened, and mm -hmm. I've never seen someone so confused, <laughs> so frustrated, and so gracious at the same time. She was known as the First Lady. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Griffin was a blessing, and she was a bright light for all students who attended this school. I'll never forget that time when talking about memories when Aaron and I tried to see how many girls here in the dorm <laughs> could make us hot chocolate. And when all the ladies finally caught on to what our, we were doing, what the scheme was, they made sure that no one would make us hot chocolate. Well, in comes Miss Griffin. We went to Miss Griffin and said, Miss Griffin, can you please make us some hot chocolate? That <laughs> evening, we're at their house. She's making the best homemade chocolate I've ever had. And guess what? The streak lasted one more night. <laughs> Oh my goodness. My memory that I'd love to share is I, I was one of many guys who came to the college. Many guys. Aspirations of marriage. Mm. And so by the time I was a freshman, I was engaged to my now wife, Lindsay. And we got such a great example from Miss Trish of what a happy and holy marriage looked like. Uh, but one of the sweet memories I have was uh, going over. She would have couples over to their house all the time and, and feed us dinner. But they all said hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. <laughs> and, but they forgot to get the little uh, marshmallows. Uh, Only yeah. had the big marshmallows. And she said, well, we're just going to have to make it work. And so she reached into the drawer in the kitchen. She grabbed kitchen shears. And she said, here, chop the marshmallows. There up. you so go. I remember standing in the kitchen cutting up marshmallows. And, you know, I can honestly say that one thing that I learned from Miss Trish is sometimes you just got to make it work. And that's a big lesson. Yeah. Many of us have been specifically impacted by Miss Trish. But all of us have been influenced, and maybe we didn't even know it. The work that she did to make sure we had all the resources we need to, to complete our assignments, to grow in our academic knowledge, and there's no way we can calculate how her ministry to provide us with a library altered the kingdom of God. Yeah, and one of my favorite memories will always be the evenings that we got to join Trish and President Griffin at their home for homemade chocolate chip cookies, my favorite, mm -hmm. and of course, an ice cold Pepsi. Nope. <laughs> Spending that time there with my friends and my future wife was transformative. Miss Trish's hospitality and her teachable moments left an indelible mark on so many of our lives. President Griffin, we know, you know, you are a blessed man for having shared your life with Miss Trish. Mm -hmm. Thank you for blessing us by sharing your lives and the example of your marriage with so many of us. So please join us for a moment of silence as we remember Miss Trish. And then we'll continue with songs from Greg Coverdale at Two Rivers Church in New Bern, North Carolina, and a message from Ajay Law with Central India Christian Mission.
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you would never fail me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me The night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again In Jesus, you're still enough Keep me with it
faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never
I am proud this afternoon to be able to have the opportunity to introduce Dr. A.J. Law, probably one of our most recognized graduates around the world. Uh, he is the head of Central India Christian Mission. He is a 1983 graduate of Roanoke Bible College, and he has done an amazing work for the kingdom of God. I am so excited to be able to introduce him, and we look forward to the message that he brings to encourage us in our ministries. Thank you, Dr. Law, for being with us today. Our family of Mid-Atlantic Christian University, I am Ajay Lal from Central India Christian Mission. On behalf of the mission and uh, from my family, especially from my wife Hindu and I, and uh, our daughter Nashi and our son-in-law Josh, with the entire team of the mission, we are extremely happy and feel privileged to send you this message that how God is blessing our work in spite of adversity, in spite of suffering, in spite of hopelessness that India and the surrounding countries and in fact the whole world has uh, experienced during the pandemic of COVID-19. When coronavirus came and started affecting different areas of India, we were concerned, how are we going to move? There is a lockdown. We have to follow the instructions of the government. There were people who were not allowed to go outside from their homes in many areas of India. There were people where, especially in the congested areas of India, uh, in, in colonies, um, in slum areas, in villages, where people were affected very badly. And we really do not know the exact number, how many people have been died because of this COVID-19. There was a huge challenge ahead of us. And we just continue to pray more and we continue to ask God that God show us the way. And from the very beginning of the church, Church of Jesus Christ has continuously faced obstacles, persecution. Even today, according to the research done by Barna Group, 125,000 Christians are being killed every year. Now hear me clearly. I'm talking about 125,000 Christians are killed every year because of their faith in Jesus. We live in the world where over 30,000 children die every day because of the hunger. 30,000 children a day because of the hunger. We continue to face the adversities and problems and difficulties. But the story has been that in spite of all the negatives, the church of Jesus Christ has continuously grown. And wherever we have faced the persecution, whenever church has faced the persecution, uh, from the very beginning, from the very beginning of the New Testament church, the church growth has been very rapid. Example, church in China. Right now, the fastest growing church is in the country of Iraq. Iraq is a very difficult and a dangerous place right now to be. But the church is growing faster than any other country. So during pandemic, we started praying and uh, we went on and on. And uh, we started thinking, we started talking to our leaders and our senior evangelists. And we became friends with the government, which is a big thing to live under a government which may not be very friendly towards Christians. But we became like a team because they saw that we wanted to help people. Um, our hospital became a shining light. In fact, this year, after uh, going through all this and having hundreds and thousands of people coming to our a hospital, um, we have received the certificate from the government that this is the best hospital with the best service in the whole district. We got the certificate from the government, this recognition, 
And we, we, we praise God because something like this only God can do. What I'm trying to say, as world becomes darker, our witness becomes brighter. We have had patients who were treated in other places as untouchables because of the COVID situation. Doctors and nurses would not even want to touch them. Nursing homes and a lot of hospitals, private hospitals were almost shut down. But our hospital reached thousands and thousands of people and had the best possible team and have the best possible treatment that we can provide and the love of Jesus Christ and uh, serving them with the prayers. Well, we are excited to share with you that in spite of the COVID-19, 270 churches were planted in the most unreached areas of India and the surrounding countries. We lost our preachers. Some of our key leaders we lost because of the COVID. We lost some young dynamic evangelists. But our team continues to move on and uh, trusting in God. Uh, we had literally millions of people who had no jobs, who have left their villages and went to the big cities like New Delhi. And the factories were closed, businesses were closed. And those people were walking hundreds of kilometers with the children and uh, you know with with all they have packing them in maybe one or two suitcases traveling back to their villages saying that even though uh, we may not have enough food but we will die among the people who love us and those people who were hopeless we were able to serve them over 12,000 people over 12,000 families rather have been served who had no food, who had literally no hope, who did not know how they were going to survive. And um, our team was able to provide the food, medical care and clothing and uh, anything they needed like masks, hand sanitizers, simple things to show our love. And uh, as a result of that, uh, over 48,000 people have responded in their decision. The, one of the biggest things that has happened is this. And I would say in last 39 years of our ministry, nothing like this has ever happened. Do you know when our Bible College, which is Calvary International Biblical Academy, went online, we jumped from having 300 students to now over 6,000 students in eight different language areas of India and the surrounding areas. Can you imagine that going online, we got over 6,000 students and we have applications for over 9,000 students. From August 2021, we are expecting to have at least over 10,000 students. And our program, our studies are focused towards church plantings, toward multiplication, uh, towards personal evangelism. All these things are there. There are many great things have happened. Uh, my wife and I were able to finish some books. Let me share one more thing before I close. We started this online church for Hindi speaking people there are over 630 million Hindi speaking people in this world today. 630 million. We started a program called Hindi Church Online. And we started that with the message and some songs and Lord's Supper and sharing the gospel with them. And we started in March third week of March 2020 with maybe 300 viewers in less than one year this program has reached 54 countries and is reaching over 3.2 million people every week we praise God for these wonderful victories we have a great team to do the follow-up work we have joined hands with 
independent churches, with evangelical churches who are going out and trying to reach these people. We have experienced a huge, huge growth, explosion almost, of our viewers. And uh, this Hindi Church Online, you can go online and, and see this, how this program is reaching millions and millions of people. And uh, we are joining hands with other missionaries, other missions to do this wonderful work of the Lord that God has called us to do. So I would say that do not lose your heart. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the promise of victory that we will be victorious and nothing, nothing will stop the work of the Lord. In spite of the adversities, the work continues to grow. So let's rise up and not lose our hearts and do whatever is possible. Look towards the open doors. See the people who are opening up. See the people who are living in darkness. Show them the love of Jesus Christ. This is a great time to be the shining witnesses of Jesus Christ. May God bless you as you continue to provide extraordinary leaders in many countries of the world. I'm privileged and grateful to Mid-Atlantic Christian University to be one of their graduates who have laid the foundation of this ministry and my life and the faith and the ministry that I Hindu and I continue to do. May God bless you and hope to see you sometime whether it's in America or in India or in the home of the Lord. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Thank you, Ajay, for that great word. We are so excited about what you're doing in leading the way in world missions and what you and your team are doing over in India. We also want to celebrate the fact that we have missionaries from MACU in over 24 countries. Let's keep praying for what they're doing worldwide and let's move on to another fun segment. Yes, yeah, so what we're going to do here is we're going to play Jenga. Uh, we have with us a student here at MACU. Perry, come on on here, Perry. Perry. Oh, what's up, man? What's up? What's going on? We're going to ask them fun questions as they're playing this game of Jenga. And uh, we got John Maurice, the prez of Mid Atlantic Christian oh, University. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, during this segment, we're going to ask them some fun questions, such as, like, Perry, if you had a rapper name, what would that be? Uh, that would be Little Crouton. Little Crouton. Okay, John, what would be your rapper name? Big Dad. Big Dad is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I like it. So they're going to play Jenga, and as they're playing Jenga, we're going to ask them questions. And uh, so let's see how this goes. Okay. Uh, President, do you want to start off first? I will let you go first. Oh, thank you so much. You're too kind. All right, first question. Perry, what is your favorite place to eat? Favorite Elizabeth City. place to eat in Elizabeth City? That's got to be cookout. Cookout all the time. Oh, 12 o'clock at night, got to go on a run. Cookout. All right, President Maurice. Go ahead, man. You know, and as you're and as you're trying to find that block, what is your is. favorite place to eat at? My favorite place to eat in the city is Cypress Grill. Woo! Good choice. I've never been there. You want to take it? Yes. Absolutely. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's on tape. It's That's on right. tape. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Now I got a question for you guys. Okay. Now, if I could give you complete immunity, meaning that you, there's no penalty for telling us this. Okay. Tell us a story that no one else knows about your time here at MACU or <laughs> RBC. <laughs> that no one else knows or just, you know, the president and staff don't know? Well, I, you know, I, I can vouch for uh, President Maurice. There's no penalty, Complete all right? Man. You no, got we immunity. Got you can say whatever you want. Tell the people. Okay. Now's your chance. Right, keep going. Um, okay, okay, something that I never told anybody. Um, there was... One time. Now, before you go on, just know I really can't give you immunity. Okay. Well, okay, well, okay. I, gotta just touch it I definitely tried to use my RA key to get onto the roof one time. Oh. Uh, but, but, but it didn't work, so I yeah. didn't get right. up there. You're so if it I'm good. Work. You weren't yeah. actually going to go. Exactly. It, exactly. Work. it was a, it was a precaution. A good one. So check things out. All right, John, complete immunity, all right? No one's watching. Just act like that camera's not there. So, uh, well, I, I came here in the dark ages when the women's curfew was 7 o'clock at night and the men's curfew was 11 o'clock. Um, and so all the guys and the girls would be in the library until 9. And then, because the girls could be in the library and then at the dorm at 9, so we would always drop 
the girls off at nine at the dorm and then we would go out to eat. Uh, but in our dorms, we had lots of uh, water fights. Ah. And so there was one night. We had night, them too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was one night in, uh, now it's Wilkinson Hall. Of course, it was Wilkinson Hall then, but it was a dorm. And uh, Rick Watford had put a bucket of water up over the door so that when you <laughs> open the door, it would fall. But uh, Frankie Dewald and I had a bathtub in our room so we had buckets <laughs> and so we went out and we had the refillable oh, ability man. so yeah. so we just went out and we doused people with buckets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know whose turn it is but go ahead and take a block. Oh man <laughs> while you guys keep on Chris playing I'll step in. Uh, first of all if anybody needs immunity for something you did while you were on campus just call <laughs> El Presidente and take care of it for you but don't bring your bucket of water. Pranks yeah. are okay. All right so we're gonna kind of zone it in a little bit. Uh, I, I, I first like to reach out to Perry okay if there's anything that you could let uh, the, the staff and faculty of the school know from a student perspective. If you could just speak and say look this is something I'd like to let, let you guys know about what we you know need or would like you to know what would, what would that be what would you like to say to the staff um, go ahead and grab a block oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still playing the game um I don't want to and this isn't necessarily something that we need but something I'd like to say is just um, thank you mm -hmm. like we really do appreciate all the stuff that the staff does for us and the professors and the way that you guys care for us and I don't think that oftentimes that's communicated well or necessarily pointed out um, so at least speaking for myself wow. um, thank you guys for that well yeah thank that's that's me. huge well I want to turn it back on you uh, and if there's something that you wish that students could know from you as the president or speaking for all the, the staff and faculty what would be something that you would like to say to the students one thing that I I don't know that the students always fully realize is how much the faculty staff really love the students mm -hmm and how much we want them to excel in their education here at Mid-Atlantic. Um, you know, I have learned over a period of time, we can't want it more than they want it, uh, but we, do, we do want them to excel and do great. We want them to grow in the image and likeness of Christ so that when they leave here, they make a huge difference for the kingdom of God. And I am excited when I see young men like Perry who have a heart for that type of ministry. Well, that's, that's oh, a lot. That was, a serious, that was a serious answer that almost <laughs> fell over. You gotta put that back on there. Be careful. This game's about to be over, leaning. guys. It's leaning. Oh, man. And good I luck, Perry. I don't know how to match that, honestly. <laughs> We're gonna let you finish out this game, and then we got one last question for you. So why don't right. you go ahead and play out? I'm just saying, I think Jinga, this is going Jinga, down. Jinga, Jinga. <laughs> Perry, you oh, did good, that's good cool. man. <laughs> it's all about balance. Of course. Okay, and here we're about to oh, get sorry. unbalanced. Here we go. Move, oh, move around. Here my. we go. You can run the other side. Oh, uh, y'all be careful on that one. Oh, she leaning. Edge of our seat. Oh, she leaning. Look at the bottom one right there. Just. No. I probably should have taken it out of the other side. But I've never played. Fingers crossed. Oh, 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 you better back up. Oh, oh, oh hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, Perry. Come on, little oh, croutons. Little croutons. Here we go. Let's do this. Oh, oh yeah, there man. we go. Hey, just sitting there for you. That looked too easy, Perry. All right. All right, you guys at home, make a comment. Who's winning this? Who's Who winning this? Winning? Post I'm, it below. My, my money's on Perry right thank now. You, thank this you. is not looking good. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is really not looking good here. Plus, that's, you don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I it's your first Jenga game, but that's <laughs> not, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one right there. This thing's going down, I can tell. <laughs> Take one for the team. You back up quick. So, what happens if you lose? You don't win. Well, back up. You oh, don't win. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Well, John, hey, come stay right here. We got one more question for you. Uh, that was great. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us for, with this segment. We just got one final question, and Perry, I'm going to ask this one okay. to you, to you first. What are, what are you guys' hopes for MacU? Just looking forward. You know, um, over the past uh, year with you know COVID and everything, I think um, you know it's been hard on people, and some people have just you know they've gotten down. Um, but I want to see going forward uh, a community of people who are truly like excited and happy and joyful to be back here on campus. Um, 
when it, it's easy um, sometimes with college, you know, go there and you have a great time and it's fun and then you go off and you know, that sort of, that was the college days is back then. But I want to see people come here and have such a heart and love for Jesus and for ministry that they're excited to get out because right. of what they can then do in the future. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's great. How about you, President John? Well, the, the heart of Mid-Atlantic is biblical education. And, you know, the, the university changed names from RBC. And, you know, we have a lot of people who are still attached to that name. And wherever I go and talk about this university, our heart is still biblical education. Right. And so no matter what degree option you take, you either major, minor, or con get a concentration in biblical studies. And that's what we always want because the Bible has the ability to transform lives. Absolutely. And so we always want to be in the transformation business working alongside God and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, but we need more students. If we're going to impact the world with the gospel of Jesus in every vocation that there is, we need more students to come here and to leave with that heart that says, if I'm going into business, I'm a Christian business person. Mm -hmm. If I'm going into medicine, I'm a Christian nurse or doctor. And uh, so that's what we want. We want to continue to train people to serve the church uh, in preaching ministry, youth ministry, missions. You mentioned uh, we have uh, graduates serving in 24 different countries around the world. We want every person in every nation to hear the good news of Jesus. Amen. So that's the future. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank you, guys. And I think all of us as alumni watching this can get behind that message. So one more time, thank y'all, uh, John. Thank you, Perry, for playing. Thank you, Perry, for having us. There you go. Y'all can exit. And I owe uh, you dinner at Cypress Grill. Yeah, we're going to do this on camera. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to go to uh, Beth Cross, who is vice president of student life here on campus. I think when we look at how big the situation is, we weren't prepared for it, and we weren't expecting it. But it's just like everything else in 2020. I think we found strength in our weakness. And in March, we didn't expect to shut the campus down, but we also didn't expect to watch hundreds of alumni put churches on the internet and watch the church break the internet a couple weeks in a row. We didn't expect to see our alumni out on the front lines as teachers and nurses and counselors leading as Christians, but they did it. And so even when we're discouraged, I know that we have something waiting on us that's going to be really good. And there is so much more that has crumbled than just our building. If you look at our culture, people are so divided and people are hurting. And everywhere you look, there's a crumbled marriage or a crumbled life somewhere. And so I think it's pretty clear what our job is. And it's not just to rebuild a wall. We are the Nehemiah of our time. It's our time to lead. This is where God uses us. And some of you probably don't even feel like you are part of the solution because you feel so broken after this year. But I think that's what he's been waiting for, that we can finally be used, that we are ready for this, and that we're stepping in to say we will rebuild. It's not about a wall to me. It's about rebuilding hope and rebuilding faith and rebuilding unity from a place that is a good foundation, from a place that's eternal and won't allow people to be shaken because that's what we do here. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna put our faith where our planning is and we're gonna rebuild, but let's rebuild more than a building. Let's rebuild lives. Let's rebuild the future of Christian leaders. We can disciple an entire generation that is ready to go, that wants to see change, and that wants to see Jesus as the hero. And that's what we're gonna watch happen right here, right now. So let's rebuild. Hey there, Matthew, friends and family. Uh, I was picked to give a word of encouragement today and I'd like to take a minute to introduce our group to you. We are Servant Song. To my immediate right is Cheryl Respis and to her immediate right is my dad, Bob Molden. And we 
are so thankful to share this opportunity to sing for the virtual uh, gospel rally for you. I think we can all agree that 2020 was really no one's year. It certainly wasn't mine. With the exception of December 30th, 2020, I didn't receive very much good news. But on December 30th, I was given the good news of, you're in your mission. Most of you probably know how 2020 went for me. You were either told or you read it on my Facebook. I took full advantage of Facebook after my car accident in January of 2020, when the salons were shut down at the end of March in 2020, and when I was diagnosed with lymphoma at the beginning of August of 2020. I wanted everyone to know my business because that meant I was able to ask for prayers from all of the folks who were reading my posts. That mattered to me. I couldn't have, I couldn't have visitors, but I could let people know what was going on with me, whether they were struggles or victories. I know that thousands of people prayed for me all over. You see, there's no way I would have made it through without God hearing those prayers and providing healing, peace, and comfort for me through all of 2020. I'm thankful to belong to Jesus because without him, I wouldn't have hope and I wouldn't have my RBC and Nike family. You all have prayed for me and encouraged me for many years, but especially during this past year. I'm grateful to be in remission. I'm grateful for your prayers and I'm grateful to be able to sing with my dad and Cheryl again. We hope you'll worship with us as we sing, I Will Rise. The Bible says we have a hope that is sure and steadfast. There's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail. There's a
Thanks so much for joining us for this year's rally. We've all been impacted by many of the same events over the past year, in different ways to be sure, but how we allow those things to influence us is a whole nother matter. In moments like these, the church has been given an opportunity to rise up to the occasion. So we're encouraging you to join us, not in simply waiting around or wishing things were just back to normal, but to rise up, take courage, and do and be what God has called us to as we're all ministers of the gospel, wherever we are and whatever we're doing. Whether you're a college student here on campus, in the trenches of the mission field, or retired after 50 years of faithful service, we are the church, and we're in this together with the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that created all things, rescued the Israelites from Egypt, and raised Jesus from the grave. We press on. And we know that in spite of collapsed buildings and global pandemics, that Matthew will continue to press forward. The hope that we have is so much bigger than buildings and viruses. And that same hope that we have in the work of Jesus is why we will rise up. That's right. I would like to quickly say that this school means a whole lot to all of us. Why? Because friends are friends forever, right? The Lord is the Lord. That's, a, that's for you, Steve Jackson. Amen. But this, uh, this place means a whole lot to us. So many memorable events have taken place on these grounds here at uh, Mid-Atlantic Christian University. So it's an honor to play such a role in this unique MACU rally. So as we wrap up, let me just say thank you. Thanks for sticking with us online. We can't wait for the days when we can all be together in person again, actually giving hugs and high fives. But until that day, let's continue to shine the light of Jesus so that the world will see our good works and they'll give glory to our Father in heaven. Thanks for joining us. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up.